for better sleep. Sometimes riding in the car isn't enjoyable. Oh. Visit the Hemp House. We have a selection of 100% safe CBD pet products. Visit HempHouseChad.com or come see us in person. The Hemp House in North Shore, East Ridge, and Ottawa. We are helping you know your dough again this morning, courtesy of Tennessee Valley Federal Credit Union. I actually get to listen and take advice from this segment, as you will as well. Jake Cash is back on the show. Uh, he is with TVFCU, and happily for us, he brought with him uh, Bento Lobo, who is the head of the Department of Finance and Economics at UTC. Good to see you. Thank you. So you came, like any good professor, with quite um, a, a, a syllabus for us to go over this morning. <laughs> and we can't right. touch on all of it, but I love the fact that very often when we talk about financial conversations, it tends to get into um, kind of specifics. Do you move your money around? What's, what's your financial advice? You look at your financial philosophy and how that impacts your life. Is that fair to set you up that way? Uh, yeah, that's fair to say uh, what we are learning is that financial problems or money problems more generally are the number one stressor for most people. Mm -hmm. And so when you have money problems, you also have other problems in your life, mental health issues and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So people get anxious, they get uh, depressed. Suicide rates tend to be higher among those that are also have money problems. Mm -hmm. So there's a link there and uh, the link between financial wellness and overall wellness is, is key to understanding that. And so what we want to do is uh, move the needle in terms of financial wellness on campus as well as in the community. So does that does moving that needle for those watching the show today, does that look like learning and becoming more educated or does it look like discipline in your day-to-day -day actions? Is it both? So both are true. So financial literacy as we might call it in the literature is not merely about skills and knowledge, but it's also about attitudes and behaviors. And so one of the things we are learning is that one needs to develop what we call financial muscle memory. Mm -hmm. And so the earlier we start with people, the better, right? Uh, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, and so on, right? Mm -hmm. So pe it's not about learning something specific, but it's having that financial muscle memory it's to know that there are certain best practices that are a good thing to, to do, right? Uh, and it'll get you to that financial wellness, which is nothing other than being, having the freedom to do, do the things you want to do in life and not having to worry on a day-to-day -day or month-to-month -month basis about your financial problems, right? So we want to be able to get there and we want people to dwell on that earlier and earlier and earlier in their lives. Okay, so if there's someone watching, and you may see this on the campus too, I don't mm -hmm. know, because certainly when you're a college student, mm -hmm. you are prey for credit card applications mm -hmm. coming your way and mm -hmm. that type of thing. Um, so if there are people watching and they've got quite a bit of debt, mm -hmm. is a good way to start even just admitting it, like putting it on paper so you can see it? Absolutely, and uh, so what we learned from uh, research in the area is that uh, people who are debt literate, in other words, this is something that comes with financial education and literacy, uh, are likely to have higher credit scores, are ha likely to borrow less, are likely to be less indebted, are likely to make repayments on time, and so on and so forth. You know, they understand, for example, the magic of compounding, right, compound interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you fail to do that, sometimes you can wind up paying higher interest rates for things that you don't need to. Right. right? So comparing credit cards or comparing financing options when it comes to cars or houses and so on and so forth, uh, you know, all of that falls in that domain of financial knowledge that leads to financial well-being. So you brought me some literature to read this morning. He like, gave me some class notes here. Uh, and you talk about the term downstream financial behaviors. What are right. those? So downstream financial behaviors are basically the behaviors we carry with us through life, right? So when you take the skill set that you have, the financial education that you have, and then make good financial choices. So uh, a best practice, for example, is that families should have three to six months of liquid savings available to meet emergencies, right, or financial shocks. And the, the evidence is that 
uh, less than 50% of US households have anything like that, right? And even in the top quartile of earners, right, less than 50% of them actually keep what we call an emergency fund, right? Mm -hmm. So when a shock happens, like there's a health problem or there's a car problem and all of a sudden, and we saw this during the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. When suddenly we learned that, oh, people can't, can't uh, cover a $400 expense that was not planned for, mm -hmm. right? So having that cushion, having that emergency fund is a key to financial wellness. I'll bring you in for a second, Jake. And you know, I'll, I'll listen to him talk because I told you I was going to be taking notes as you educated me this morning. Um, but to his point about having those accounts where you've got your money house, that's one of the things you can do so easily at the credit union. Y'all have people Absolutely. who have all different types of accounts with you. There's all sorts of great savings options uh, mm -hmm. that we can tailor fit to your needs, essentially, whether it's money market accounts, CDs, basic share accounts. There's lots of opportunities to save for retirement, which is very important to do uh, from an early age if you can. I mean, that's a part of financial wellness mm -hmm. is planning for that future when you're not working as well there is something it's like you know when you're when you were a kid and your mom would bake a cake and you knew you couldn't have any until after supper and yet <laughs> you wanted to go in there and just get a little bit of the icing right it mm -hmm. tempted you mm -hmm. there's something about putting your money aside for a long way down the road that just gnaws at you because you want to tap into it when those unexpected that's things right. happen right that's great right. example and uh, folks at TVFCU and elsewhere will tell you that uh, you know you got to sort of pay yourself first in a way. Mm -hmm. In other words, you got to put that money aside in a fashion where you don't have the temptation to go touch it, mm -hmm. or where there's a severe penalty for touching it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you put it in an IRA and you touch it before you're you're taxed and on and it. half, you know you you get yeah. uh, all that kind of uh, what, what penalties associated with what it. What about the, do you have these conversations with your students that there is a difference in how much money you earn mm -hmm. and how much money you have? Because you can earn a lot, but if you spend it all, you have nothing. Right, and, and those are uh, financial behaviors, right? So we understand that, which is why sometimes uh, by the time you're in college, it's almost too late to try to correct some behaviors. But if we can get to people earlier and earlier in their lives and just have them appreciate the value of saving, appreciate the value of an emergency fund, understand that there are certain long-term goals in life that you have to pre prepare for, mm -hmm. right? Uh, just thinking about that alone, I think. So here's an interesting uh, finding from the literature, right? So some of these financial education programs, right, are shown to have the same type of effects as intervention, educational interventions in other domains like math and reading. So. Uh, educational interventions to enhance math skills or reading skills, mm. right? When you look at effects, they're comparable to what we have here with financial education and financial behaviors. Right. So there is a, there is a great deal of value to financial education mm -hmm. in getting people to where we want them to get to uh, from a financial well-being standpoint. I'm scanning your notes yeah. and the bottom of this page just jumped out at me and I know we're going to have to wrap this up in a second, mm -hmm. but when students take your course, mm -hmm at UTC, and by the way, you can audit classes. At, you, of course, you can uh, enroll and be a student if you want to go back, but mm -hmm. you can audit a class. That's right. Um, when they take your class, mm -hmm. they pay down quite a bit of debt Yeah, what so they we do Yeah, so we do classroom simulations uh, when we teach the personal finance class, and what we find is on average, people build up their savings, their emergency savings by about $1,100 over the course of the semester. That's quite a bit of money. It's quite a bit of money and they also pay down their debt by an average of two thousand dollars during the semester. So it's fantastic in terms of moving the needle. So if we do a before and after relative to when they enter the course and when they exit the course, you know, there's some really sharp uh, uh, positive results to talk about. You had wanted, um, hold on real quickly, are you wanting to talk about this golf tournament that you have going on or am I reading ahead too far? Well, the golf tournament's not until October, but we do I'm reading ahead support, too far. Well, that's just to say that we do a lot to support financial education and, and like uh, Professor Lobo said, getting that into high schools is a big part. We support junior achievement and we actually teach classes. Some of our subject matter experts at TVFCU go into classes like at the Construction Career Center and things like that because like uh, Professor Lobo said, getting that information to them as early as possible is crucial. Okay, um, I have, I'm going to have time for you to read one or two of your student comments you yeah. wanted to share. Sure. Do you want to read them? Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, students have taken this class uh, taught by my colleague Dr. Christy Wan. Uh, mm -hmm. they say things like, this is a class that I wish everyone could take. 
This should be a general education or required course for all majors. It is extremely applicable to our real lives. It can make a huge impact in someone's life and change it forever. Okay. So this is some of the feedback we get from students who take the class. So, uh, since I gave this teaser that people can audit with you, mm -hmm. if they want to find out about this, should they ask for a specific class name? Yeah, it's personal finance is okay. the course. And uh, starting in the fall of this year, of 2023, it will be offered in the general education curriculum at UTC. Excellent. So it's going to be available to anybody walking in the door, freshman on, okay. right, uh, to be able to sit in on that class. Okay. I'll tell you a fun fact about me. Okay. I like to save my change. Like, yeah. You know, and uh, so I, I spend cash sometimes and sometimes I don't, but I don't like, I've, I've got like 78 bucks or something, uh -huh. and I don't want to cash it out, even though it's like all in pennies. <laughs> I don't want to cash it out jar. because it's so fun to know that that money is there. I so do the same thing. I'm a I big believer in making it inaccessible. Yeah. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Absolutely. You can always know your dough by going to tvfcu.com. They'd love to help you. Uh, their number there on your screen, 634-3600. Contact UTC if you're interested in the personal finance class that could make your life a whole lot easier. Thank you so much. Thank you. Julia, what are you doing? We have a commercial to film. I'm taking a break. <laughs> breaks are what we're telling people about. Budget breaks. Visit budgetbreaks.com for locations and coupons. Budget breaks. Breaks starting at just a hundred bucks. At NBC Universal, we are recentering the narrative and recognizing Black heritage on a global scale. Let's look closer, celebrate bigger, and unite our unique cultures. Join us on this journey. Discover Black heritage. Linderman's Furniture is starting the new 